And we're back with the Hammer Podcast. All right, friends. Here at the Hammer Podcast, we like to say promises made and promises kept. On Sunday, Pastor Mike promised that he would deal with the issue of what happens to someone who's never heard about Jesus in eternity. After they die, what happens to these people that have never heard about Jesus? And if you remember, that was in the context when we were bringing up the fact that you are saved, that we are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through him. So, That's right. That's right. Pastor Mike, help us understand this issue with more clarity. Yes, well, first of all, I certainly am not going to um, bring something new to the table. I'm not writing the dissertation. In this uh, short episode? This. No yeah, dissertation? I, no, but I, I'm not bringing something new that's never been said in church history or whatever. But, you know, yeah, I mean, the issue itself that people will sometimes bring up to us uh, when we're witnessing to them or sometimes we might see a well-known Christian leader or... Uh, pastor being interviewed uh, and oftentimes uh, an unbelieving interviewer this sort of question will come up it might be framed uh, what about those who have never heard or it might be framed what about the sincere Muslim the sincere Hindu or, or what have you right that has yeah. never heard about Jesus right uh, well you know first of all we have to think about as we think about this what do we know about God so what do we know about God himself? Well, what we know is that God always does what is best. Right. Okay. So we, we know that whatever he does is, is right. Third, uh, we, we, we know that only there's only one way to salvation, according to Scripture, and that right. is conscious faith in Jesus Christ. And the reason I say conscious faith yeah, is exactly. because right. there are people out there that will say, well, you know, people that believe in Jesus or live up to the light that they have, even though they're not conscious of it. Now, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> it sounds like a good dodge right, of right. clear biblical truth. Right. So the Bible's clear. There's only one way of salvation, and that is through conscious faith, right? And Romans 10 uh, lets us know, verse 17, faith comes from hearing, hearing by the word of Christ. Now, what is interesting is what comes before Romans ten seventeen, Right there in Romans, beginning in, in verse 14 of chapter 10, it says, How then will they call on him of whom they have not believed? Yeah. How will they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how will they hear without a preacher? And how will they preach unless they are sent? Just as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news of good things. However, they did not all heed the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed, I report. So faith comes from hearing, hearing by the word of Christ. Now, so the clear point is that people need to hear the gospel. They need to hear that Jesus is the way. Uh, and that comes through the proclamation of the truth, the word of God. And then it is through that external call that the Holy Spirit works faith internally, right? Okay, so all of this... Uh, to say that there's absolutely one way and only one way of salvation. God has made that clear in Scripture. Abundantly, okay? yes. Right. Now, having said all of that, I want to say something here that I don't know that we often think about. When we say, or when we ask, well, what happens to those people who have lived but never heard about Jesus? When we say that, we are making a massive assumption. We are assuming that there are all these people out there uh, who have never heard of Christ. Right. Now, let me clarify what I'm saying and delineate this a little bit, okay? We know now we talk about sending missionaries to unreached people groups. And there might be somebody that hears what I'm saying and say, well, don't, you, you shouldn't suggest that God could bring them revelation in other ways or reveal himself in other ways because that will hurt the missions enterprise. Missionaries won't, will get lazy and won't want to go out. Look, I, I'm not, 
I'm not interested in all these philosophical, yeah. illogical arguments, right? It's the same thing that people would say, well, if if God is sovereign in salvation and elects people, then people won't evangelize. Go out. All right, we've already yeah. made it clear through sermons, and the Bible's clear, the same God who ordains the ends ordains the means. Okay, so those are... Uh, illogical, philosophical arguments that we don't need to waste our time with. I think the Bible would speak of them as silly myths. Okay? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, now, let's get back to the assumption. I think you, you, we're making a huge assumption to say there are all these people out there. Now, there may be absolutely people groups out there that as far as we know, and how far do we really know? Yeah, right. I, how I'm, far I'm do we? I'm sitting here yeah. right now in my office. I don't know very far about this. Yeah. I don't know how far you know. So how do we know uh, where God has sent certain people to, where they have ended up, okay? So we may not have record of this or that people group being reached, okay? But uh, we are assuming that there's no other way for God to reveal himself to people than through another human being. Now, part of that is because we have Scripture, and we see this throughout Scripture, right? Right, right. Uh, people taking the Word of God, certainly in the New Testament, right? The, the church expands in the book of Acts by the preaching of the Word of God. Yeah. Um, so we're used to that. We think in terms of that. Okay, and that may be indeed the normal way. Okay, however, uh, if you read about missions at all, and if you read biographies of missionaries, uh, and I'm talking about people, missionaries whose theology is solid and strong, okay? Yeah, yeah. Then, then, then you will sure. read of some remarkable stories. You, you, you'll read of missionaries uh, getting to unreached people groups uh, and having them say things like, you know, coming up to them and there's this language barrier and they're trying to work with them. And these people essentially have anticipated this missionary. Right. Uh, and they'll say things like, yes, God, you know, gave us a vision, or, or God uh, somehow or another put it upon our hearts that he would send someone mm-hmm. to, to tell us the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have other missionaries who talk about, uh, you know, reaching a people group and finding out that, that there are some there who... Uh, whom God has already revealed himself to. And uh, they're just waiting to be grounded in the faith. And that's what the missionaries are able to do. Right. But God has gone before them. Now, when I say visions and this sort of thing, does this mean we should be going around saying that we ourselves are having all of these visions? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. All of this right. Benny Hinn stuff? No, that is not at all what we're talking about. Okay, we're talking about the missionary endeavor. Okay, now, think about this. We think of Scripture. Who, who reached Abraham and Sarah? Yeah, that's a good question. We, we, they were pagans, right? living in Ur, right? They, they, they were pagans, uh, worshiping false gods like all the people around them. And who revealed himself to them? God. Right. And he did it himself. Right. Okay, so that's cl- a clear example of God being able to do that. Mm-hmm. Okay, now, again, is that the normal way? Is there going to be somebody in, in Pittsburgh? Is there going to be someone in Orlando? Uh, someone in San Diego walking down the road or something? They're sitting in their house and God is going to give them some vision or reveal himself in that way? Uh, no, I, I would not think that is likely because the gospel is readily available and heard all around us. Right. Okay? But if you go to... Uh, Timbuktu, as we call it, okay, you go... Where is Timbuktu? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you go... I heard it's a good place to vacation. Yes, yes. You don't get bothered by anyone. But uh, but look, if you go to these places uh, where they talk about unreached people groups and such, you know, they're living in a time almost as if like Abraham and Sarah. In sure. Her, okay? Uh, so in those places, God absolutely uh, can do w- whatever he wants. Uh, now, again... We don't say, well, God can reach them, therefore we don't try to send missionaries. No, that, that's not what we're talking about here. I'm just simply saying that that we're making the assumption that there, you know, this mass group of people out there who live their entire lives 
never hear, whether it be from another human being, a missionary, another believer, right, or, uh, or what have you, that they never hear of Christ, that God never sends them any, any light. Uh, and I just think that is a, a massive assumption. So that's the first thing I would say is yeah. don't make that massive assumption. assumption. Okay. So so how do people often go ahead? Well, yeah, I was going to think because when you're talking about Abraham and Sarah and the angel coming, it reminds me of Galatians chapter one verse eight, right, where there's this whole confrontation between Paul and Peter, and he says. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preached, let him be accursed. Yes. Now, there's there's something being assumed in that, that an angel might come and preach something to people. Right. Yeah. And there are some people that take that passage and say, well, Paul's speaking a little bit uh, hyperbolically there. I don't think he is because we see angels involved in Matthew 24 the end of Matthew 24 with the second coming right, and so forth. Um, so I think it is certainly uh, possible that God uses their ministering spirits. Right. If God wants to use them uh, to give a gospel proclamation, obviously he can. And Paul's whole point there, uh, I think, is to be taken at face value, which is if an angel were to tell you right. that there's some other gospel besides the one we're preaching, don't listen to them. Just like a false teacher. Okay, it doesn't matter if it's an angel, if it's a human. All right. So, uh, so yeah, I, I think that uh, I think we're on, on on good ground there. And you know, the way some people try to, they some of the options they give for this sort of thing is they say, well, you know, God knows what they would have done if they heard. Uh, well, yes, He does. He knows all things, possible and actual. But again, that's not what Scripture teaches. Right. Okay. Uh, you cannot be saved without believing. Right. All right? Without faith. Some people say, well, they just get a second chance. No, they don't. Scripture's clear there's purgatory. no second chance. Purgatory. It's a purgatory of sorts, right? right they right. get to. Right. Work Other it people off. say, well, you know, it's just it, it's an automatic entrance. But again, I, and of course it's not, but again, I go back to the fact that God ordains the means and the ends. Yeah. Okay? And so I think that's very important for us. Uh, to keep in mind when we're dealing with an issue such as this. And I would also say this. Uh, we, we need to think about, you know, when we are, most of us will never probably ever be in a place where we're being interviewed by CNN or uh, Larry King or Fox. The or late Larry, Larry King. King. Yeah, yeah, you know, and, and of course the Larry King interviews, you know, we can talk about, uh, you know, Billy Graham was on there. Uh Robert Schuller from the Crystal Cathedral was on there. MacArthur's been on there before. Um, but when, when sometimes when people are interviewed or when you're just sharing Christ with an unbeliever, this question will come up. Well, what about those who haven't heard? Well, you know, we don't, as we're evangelizing, we don't need to get sidetracked with that. Because why I don't know exactly what's going on in the mind of the person asking that question, mm -hmm. I have a hunch. Yeah, and, deflect, and, right, diffuse, right. And my avoid. hunch, my hunch is they want to hear you say that somehow, somehow, some way, there's some other potential, possible way to get to heaven without conscious faith, right, in Christ, right. Because then maybe they'll make it. Yep, yep. Because they don't want to believe in Jesus. That's, right, right. That's so beyond they, what so they, they want. So they want to get you to back off of John 14, 6. They want to get you to back off of Jesus isn't the only way maybe in this situation or that situation. And according to Scripture, He is the only way. We're not given any other situation Yeah. in Scripture. And God is consistent with His character and who He is. He, he doesn't just brush away unbelief and sin, mm -hmm. right? You, you, in order to be saved, you must believe. That is the means. Yep. Okay. Um, so, at any rate, so we, we, we want to be careful getting sidetracked with these sorts. And sometimes we'll hear people say, well, God hasn't, you know, he's He's smarter than me. He loves more than me. So whatever he does is right. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. No, no, because you're giving the unbeliever exactly what they want. 
you're giving them this little twinge of, well, maybe conscious faith in Jesus really isn't the only way. And I'm telling you, conscious faith in Jesus is absolutely the only way you're going to heaven. How do I know that? Why can I be so firm in that? Because that is what the Word of God says. There is no other way. Now, look, when you say that to an unbeliever, especially to one of these uh, interviewers. Sure, know, yeah. Tim Keller, you know, got himself in trouble in 2006, 2007. Yes, yeah, right. Because that was... he wouldn't just answer the question straight. Mm -hmm. uh, but he was hemming and hauling when he was asked, what about the sincere, uh, you know, Muslim, Hindu, you know, what about people that don't hear? And, you know, he gave this answer of, well, God, you know, reveals things to me as I need to know them. And, you know, he hasn't, as if there's something, somehow God hasn't revealed all of this. He has. It's in his word. Yeah, it's, yep. Now, here's the thing. The interviewer, okay, the unbeliever, they're not going to like this answer. Right. They don't want the answer to be conscious faith in Jesus Christ is the only way. Right. Because that condemns them. Right. They're not going to like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Our job isn't to make them like our answer. Our job isn't even, we, look, we're not sitting there saying to you, I'm telling you my thoughts and you mm -hmm. have to believe me. We're saying, here's what Jesus said. Mm -hmm. And we can point them to Scripture, right? We, we can point them to John 14:6. Okay, we can point them to uh, Matthew 7, right? Uh, 13 and 14. So, so we're, we're not, this isn't our word. Yeah, this it's is God's, God's word. word. Yep. And, and we can never water it down. We can never tone it down to be liked by the world, okay? That, that, that is not what we should do, all right? When we do that, we are committing the sin, in essence, uh, that I'm not saying we're committing the Judas sin okay, sure, yeah. of betrayal, but we're committing the, the Peter, I, I, I don't know him, mm -hmm. denial sort of thing, right? Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, and, you know, we, we want to make sure we're not doing that. So, But again, when we're evangelizing and somebody brings this up, our focus really needs to be, hey, you're not in this situation. You're a sinner. Yep. Because we're all sinners. God says this is what happens to sinners. Yeah. Okay. And here's the only cure. Here's the only forgiveness available for your sins. That's Jesus Christ. So today, so, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. That's right. So we want to say to them, look, you're not someone who hasn't heard. So none of this makes any difference for you, okay? I, I'm talking to you. Mm -hmm. It's only conscious faith in Christ. You have heard. You're hearing it now. Believe. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. That's where we want to maintain our focal point. Why do you think? Why do you think some Christians want to chase that rabbit trail? I mean, we've alluded to it a little bit, but you know, maybe right. as we you know bring this to a close, uh, you know, again, I can't answer for for everyone. I will only say that when I have seen interviews, and again, I, I don't like to say these guys' names because uh, I don't like to unnecessarily throw anyone under the bus. And you know what? Maybe if I were on an interview on national TV, maybe I would wimp out. I pray that I wouldn't. Uh, but I'll tell you this, that when you watch some of these interviews uh, that you know Billy Graham gave uh, and his interaction with Robert Shuler, uh, as well, and then and then Tim Keller with uh, Martin Bashir, uh, who was interviewing him. I I my guess would be that they simply want to be liked. Yeah. Okay. Look, I, and again, I'm not trying to put it that, but when when Billy Graham died, it, there was almost everyone, every news outlet said positive things about him. Yeah. Okay. Do you think that's going to happen when John MacArthur died? I yeah, can, might, I can, might be slightly different. Yeah, I can tell you what happened when Spurgeon died, for instance. Okay, yeah, there were massive amount of people that attended that funeral because, uh, or memorial service because there were a lot of people that loved this guy. But I want to tell you something. You can go back and read anybody can go back and read some of the newspaper. Clip. There were a whole lot of people that hated him and was glad that he was gone. Yeah, dancing okay. on his grave. Why? Sure. Because he just proclaimed the truth. Okay, so like for instance, when uh, Billy Graham was asked uh, specifically by Larry King. Uh, these types of questions, I, I still remember him saying, and this is readily available for anybody that wants to YouTube it, okay, until they take it down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Censor it. 
Yeah, but no, he, he, he specifically said, he said, it is my uh, about those who who have not heard and about those who are sincere Jews. I think actually his specific question was, what about the sincere Jew, the sincere Muslim, sincere Hindu? And Billy Graham said, it is not my job to make those judgments. It's it's my job to preach the, the love and forgiveness of Jesus. No, it it is your. It's all of our jobs, right? Well, in fact, we don't make the judgment. God's already yeah, made. The God's judgment. already made it. So we're not right. making a judgment. We're telling people, informing people of the judgment that's been made by the judge, the king, of the universe. Right. So, in those instances, I would suggest these are just men that simply lacked courage, and were too concerned about being liked and being popular. And I would pray that if I'm ever in that situation, that I would have the courage to be like Lady Jane Grey, that I would have the courage to be like Polycarp and to be like the disciples uh, before us uh, who were martyred, everyone as far as we know, except for uh, the Apostle John. So right. at any rate. I think that's a good place to end. Thanks again, and we'll see you next week.